And what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Talk in NASCAR podcast. This is episode number 85. And just as promised, Hitmaster's back. Everything's hopefully okay. I was cutting out. out. Um. Hopefully it doesn't fuck up. It usually does, but uh anyways, so we're recording this very early in the week. We normally don't do that, uh, because I like all the week's news to like come out before we record the episode for the week. This is uh, but I will be gone most of the week. Uh actually will be gone right now at the time of recording this video. So or this video going live. So we're recording it early. This means it's going to be a pretty short episode. All we got to really do is recap the insane weekend at Nashville. Um, uh, there is one little silly season news piece. And then at the end, of course, we will also preview the Chicago street course. So that should be a lot of fun. But also happy 4th of July to anybody out there. Um, I know this is going to be coming out the day after the 4th of July. But anybody's out there. Happy 4th of July. Um, so, well, anyways, let's jump right into it. We'll first talk about Nashville. Um, so I didn't watch any of the truck race or the Xfinity race. Um, I just was able to watch the highlights. Um, in the truck race, there was a wreck on the first lap and some pretty wild restarts overall, it looked like. Um, lots of good action there. It was a tough day for Honeycutt. Sadly, I like his name, so I always I always root for him because I like his name, so he's pretty cool. Um, uh, Riggs and Parsons also got into multiple altercations. They were feuding pretty much the entire night, it looked like, um, so that was an interesting to watch. Um, and then yeah, Christian Eckes was able to get the win, um, had a really good run going pretty much all night, and... Um, was able to take the win. So, good job to Christian Eckes. Even though he's already just going to destroy the entire field and when it's championship four, so. Yeah. Uh, the Xfinity race was honestly pretty tame. Um, action didn't really pick up until the third stage. Uh, Justin Allgaier got into, got spun by Ty Gibbs, or got spun Ty Gibbs. In the third stage, after Ty Gibbs was having a really good run, um, Sheldon Creed also had a late exit with mechanical issues, um, but that was really all that was super noteworthy. Uh, watching the highlights for this race on a NASCAR's YouTube channel was very, very cringe because they were just showing like the most random stuff. But in the end, John Hunter Nemechek was able to get the win um, in pretty convincing fashion. Especially after Ty Gibbs went out because of the um the spin. So but other than other than that, wasn't really much to talk about with that race. So Glenn Boyer did trash in the truck race. Did he? Oh yeah, he ran like the truck race. He always race. does. He ran the truck race. I forgot he ran the truck race. Um I mean his finish wasn't bad. It was just his entire race sucked. Uh, I mean, I he's been what he's been he's been out of the out of NASCAR for four years now, so can't really can't really blame him for running bad. He finished seventeenth after starting eleventh. Uh, okay. So I mean, he's not last, but he's not first either. But honestly, the. Really, really tame and albeit pretty boring Xfinity race was completely made up for by the absolutely insane cup race that happened. This race lasted, I shit you not, six hours. 330 laps when they're supposed to go 300 laps. So they had an extra 30 laps that they went around that track. It was insane. Um, so let's go over it. Um, so 
Um, it was not as good to note that Justin Haley had to serve a penalty at the start of the cup race. He had to serve a pass through penalty and still rallied for a good finish. Um, a good run even. So good job for Justin Haley. Um, he's been doing some great work in that Rick Ware car, dude. I mean, he's going to, he needs, so he needs a better ride next season. I got to say, um, and then we got another rain delay. Because of pop-up showers at Nashville. Because it was 100 degrees. Thankfully, the track has lights. And they... And it was a very quick shower. So it was able to... The track did get soaked because it did downpour. But the sun came back out and really helped dry the track up. And the wasn't that big of an issue. It was like an hour and a half or something delay. Or something like that. So not terrible. Um... But then things actually action really picked up in the um, really picked up in the third stage. Honestly, um, Chris Rebel was dominating the race pretty much, ran superbly for most of the race, um, and he wrecked in the third stage after a really good run. Ended up finishing in the back. Brad Keselowski suffered the same fate shortly afterwards after having also a pretty good run. Um, he took an, he took an especially hard hit rear end first, uh, into the backside, the, the rear end, the new rear ends that they made for 2024, um, got tested this week. Christopher Bell, Brad Kozlowski, and another wreck that we'll talk about a little bit later on, um, all tested it. So, and as far as we know, everybody was okay. So seems as though it worked. Um, but. You know, well, I, I guess we wouldn't know at this point. We're recording only like a day after the race. So there you go. Watch um, after we record this the next day. Brad Kozlowski's going to be a. Would be insane. Oh. Um. There were some other tempers as well. I mean, the Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin ongoing feud just kept going on. Um, really, I mean, they were they were really they were they were beating this thing to a pulp as well too. Corey LaJoy and Harrison Burton also had some feuds on the track um, that kind of spoiled over as well. So uh, Michael McDowell had mechanical problems that took him out of the race, and then late in the going, fuel mileage became the name of the game. Um, drivers was trying to stretch it out late on a long run. And then Austin Sendrick spins with two laps to go. Hamlin was less than a straightaway away from the white flag. And Austin Sendrick spins. Caution comes out. We're going to overtime. We're concerned about fuel. But we're ready. We get ready. Get ready for this. This is one of the most insane overtime sequences that I think I have ever seen happen live. Um... So anyways, we get the first overtime, the big one strikes going into turn one. And this was the third wreck that happened with the rear end cars. Ross Chastain took an absolutely insane hit. The wall even caved in a little bit to give way for safer barrier pressures. Um, took out some other cars as well. Uh, Ty Gibbs was involved. Kyle Busch was involved, but he continued on. Truex was involved. Um, a lot of drivers were taken out in that one. So then we get a second overtime. And you're thinking, okay, everybody's got a pit now, right? I'm hoping everybody pits. By the way, I took Reddick this week in fantasy, and he got a good amount of stage points, and he was running in the top 10, and then he decides to pit, start overtime, like... So I'm mad, but then the big one hits. He gets through, and we get another restart, and the other drivers might pit. I'm like, okay, there is some hope here. Nobody pits. So we go to another overtime attempt. And another big one happens on the back stretch. This one taking out Harrison Burton as well as a few others. So I'm like, okay. You thought Daytona and Talladega had big ones. Ha! Nashville did it better. So I'm like, okay. Some drivers have to pit now, right? And two did. I think Denny Hamlin did along with somebody else pitted. So. Sure. So like, okay. Maybe now Reddick can have a good run and we'll get this race over with. We go to a third attempt. Kyle Larson runs out of gas as they restart and Kyle Busch spins. 
By the way, Kyle Busch had a really terrible run going throughout this entire race. He was like back in the 30s and 20s all race. He was a lap down at one point. But thanks to some really inconspicuous fuel strategy, he found himself in the top five with a shot to win going into overtime. And then he got dumped on the restart because Larson ran out of gas and the crowd went berserk. Um, they went absolutely insane you were screaming that he was out of the race. So that was pretty funny to watch. He got dumped by Chase Elliott. Um, so that was good. So then we go to a fourth overtime, and you're like, okay, everybody's on fumes. Something's got to give, right? And like, okay, they're getting back to the white flag. They're about to take the white flag. I'm okay with the top 10. Reddick's in the top 10 by this point. I'm like, okay, we're talking about the top 10. Nope. Josh Berry Rex. Another restart. Joey Logano and Chase Briscoe are on the front row. Both of them have gone over 100 laps without pitting. On a mile and a third track. How do you stretch the fuel load that far on a non-short track? So we get to a fifth overtime. And they restart. Reddick is flying. He gains like five spots in the first turn. Briscoe, I think, ran out of gas, but Logano's still up there fighting with the Spire cars of all sorts are in also in a shot to win. What a run they had. Yes. The 77 at one point, um, I think at the end of the race, he was top 10. Uh Corey LaJoy had to pick because he had some damage. And then Zane Smith with just massive power. He could have won that race. He he said he was upset that, uh, you know, the guy that won the race um, was putting right when he got to the line. So he was upset that if it would have been around three and four, it would have been a different story. Yep. Joey Logano somehow stretched the fuel load for 106 laps at Nashville. Congratulations. Congratulations to man. win the race. He's into the playoffs. He was one of the bubble drivers, and he's into the playoffs. I was really, really pissed because Tyler Reddick had it. Going into turn four, he had the run to pass Logano on the bottom and win the race. But Zane Smith was down there and blocked him in, and he couldn't make the pass on the high side, and he just ended up pushing Logano to the win. And, you know, Reddick had second locked up, and then Zane Smith came out of nowhere and took second, so he got third. Not bad, though. We moved up nine spots in fantasy this week, so that's really good. Um, Logano wins um, somehow to uh, get the win. He even had enough fuel for a small burnout, which was insane. Um, before the car finally quit. But that was just an insane race. Um, there was so much that happened just in the overtime spots alone. That you can even completely forget about the rain delay that happened. It, it was just insane. Insane stuff. Uh, never never seen a race like that ever. And Nashville's kind of becoming an underrated track. It's put on some good races in its four, four cups, cup years now. So... Um, hopefully they're thinking about keeping it around because originally this track was meant to just be a feel a filler for the Nashville Fairgrounds, but which they still haven't even gotten clearance to even try and put that track on the schedule yet. So we'll see what happens there. But really, really good racing. Logano is was already locked into my New Year's Eve spectacular because he's a former winner. So nothing changes there. But big changes for the playoffs going through. So there you go. Uh, but I don't know if you have any other news in Master or not. Or, like, any thoughts about the racing or anything. Um, I mean, it was a good race. I loved it. Um, I know Ty was upset about the Lugano win, but honestly, I've never said this in my lifetime, but I'm actually glad Lugano won that race and not Denny Hamlin. I hate Hamlin with a passion. And uh, Giggles Logano won. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too mad at the end of the day. 
Like, he earned it. You know, I'm more mad at Zane Smith, but I can't be too mad because he had a really good run and he normally doesn't have a good run. So I'm, I'm okay with it. It's fine. We still got a lot of good points, but we really, I really wanted the win. So, oh, well. So, but anyways, that's going to do it then for our thoughts about Nashville. Really, really fun weekend. So let's put it in the books. I only have one piece of news just came out today um, regarding Chicago. Um, speaking about Joey Logano, he's going to be running the Xfinity race this weekend as well at Chicago. He'll be filling in for Haley Deegan. Um, there's been some uproar about Haley Deegan possibly not having a ride next season. So this might be a... Uh-oh. She might not. She might be losing her ride. Are you expecting me to say something? I guess not. <laughs> anyway, that was the only other piece of news. So, unless you had anything, Hitmaster. Um, if you guys are into Legos, um, NASCAR is coming out with another Lego set. Um, they had a Lego set from the 75th anniversary last year. Um, I actually have it on my thing right, right over there. Um, but it's going to be the, uh, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 set. That is what it's supposed to look like. Looks like the UPS truck. Pretty much. Um... It they should says, just they should have just made the UPS truck. It says the 328 piece set will be available beginning August 1st, allowing fans and car lovers alike to drive into the world of stock car racing with a colorful paint scheme and plenty of stickers to fancily decorate their cars. Okay, so they don't just have this. Hmm. Hmm. It, will also, it will also feature authentic Chevrolet next-gen stock car features as well as a NASCAR driver minifigure, complete with an individual helmet. Hmm. Interesting. As you, know, as you guys know, I am a big fan of Legos. Um, I actually had created one when I was in Chicago. That's supposed to be me. Um, nice. He's supposed to have a hat, but I lost it, so he's just bald. <laughs> um, and then I have a little, I have a little coffee cup for him, because I like coffee. But I mean, let's keep doing this. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So, but if we didn't have any other news. <sighs> We can jump straight into our Chicago street course predictions. Um, you know, honestly, I completely forgot this race was happening because last year they would not shut up about it all season, legit all season. This year they have barely talked about it. They talked about it at Nash at during the Nashville race a little bit. That was the first time I've really heard them like go in depth about the race, which was insane. Um, Regardless, though, I mean, they're going to get another shot to race. Hopefully the rain holds off this time and actually allows for some more competitive racing than what we got last season. Um, but should be good um, overall. The fans seem excited, so should be a good one. Um, it says right here on Sunday, it will be 87 degrees and partly sunny. But then again, that could change. So... So far, yep. it's looking like a sunny day for you guys in Chicago. I wish I was there. I got to see all that when it's not built. So. But um, Xfinity and Cup will be racing this weekend. So who do we got for the Xfinity series? I just want to say that I wish the truck series raced at freaking... Chicago. I mean, why not? But, eh, oh well. 
I'm going to pick Shane Van Gisbergen. You bitch. Because, you know, he's probably going to sweep the weekend, honestly. He's my cup pick already. Like, he's racing, right? He's racing cup. I think that was one of his tracks, right? Mm -hmm. He put on a good show at Nashville last week, too. I am going to go with Kyle Larson. Okay. I was going to go with Ty Gibbs, but then I realized I hate Ty Gibbs with a burning passion, so I'm going to go with Kyle Larson, the second best. Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. So, um, and then we do we have the chips? Ready cup. Do we have the chips? All right, here we go. One is Tyler, and he will get... Blaney, which isn't a bad pick, but he's not a road tour threader. Nope. Speaking of which, I don't think any of the guys are road tour threaders that I have in here. Well, I better hope uh, I'm going with the double duty and see if he can get the sweep. <laughs> No, that, that's so funny. That is so funny. The sweep, baby. Let's go for the sweep. That would be funny. Um, Get those brooms out. I'd like that. That'd be funny. Um, But anyways, though, that's really all I got for this week. I know it's a short episode because we only recorded it so soon. Anyway. Um, which means, just means there's going to be a lot more to talk about in next week's episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. When we recap the Chicago Street Course, we preview Pocono is next as well. And I'm going to be going to a new track while I'm on vacation. So I will talk about that on the podcast as well. So next week. But if you want to be a guest on the Talk and NASCAR podcast, all you have to do is uh, you can join the Pringles Center Company Discord. Link is in the description down below. You can request the Talk and NASCAR role, and either me or Hitmaster will get it to you, and we'll figure out a time for you to get on and talk some NASCAR. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, anyways, that's really all we got for this week. Stay tuned for other much more amazing content, including more stuff from both me and Hitmaster. Go check him out. Go check me out, too. Till next time, see you guys later. Goodbye.